Hello everyone! Uh, this game was played in 1956. It was played between Donald Byrne and the 13-year-old Bobby Fischer. And a lot of you may think that everyone in the world always knew who Bobby Fischer was, but it was only after this game was played that everyone in the world knew who Bobby Fischer was. And uh, Bobby wasn't the favorite in this game, but Donald Byrne was actually the favorite, even though Bobby was a very prospective young chess player and a junior US champion. Uh, Donald Byron was actually a multiple times senior US champion and he also almost had his grandmaster title at the time this game was played. Uh, but the tournament was actually won by Samuel Ryszewski and Bobby Fischer got uh, ninth place in this tournament. Uh, but it, uh, he did produce this beautiful game that was later called the game of the century. Uh, so let's see this game. Uh, Donald Byron is uh, white and Bobby Fischer is black. <clears throat> we have knight to f3, knight to f6, c4, g6, knight to c3. Bishop to g7, d4, Bobby castles, Bishop to f4, and Bobby goes for the Grunfeld defense, d5. Queen to b3, and here Bobby plays uh, d captures on c4, uh, which is, uh, which is uh, uh, an important decision, because uh, after d captures on c4, and if the queen recaptures, then after e3 is played, then this bishop will have to be de developed somewhere other than c4, so it, it's kind of a tempo move. So we have d captures on c4, queen captures on c4, and now c6. Uh, this defends this c7 pawn because the queen and the bishop were attacking it, and also prevents this knight from going to b5 or d5 in the future. Uh, we have e4, knight b to d7, preparing knight to b6, rook to d1, uh, Bobby plays knight to b6, and uh, Byron plays uh, queen to c5. Byron could have played the uh, queen back to b3, but this allows the bishop to e6 with a tempo, and, uh, well, Byron has another idea why he played queen to c5, which we'll see very soon. Uh, Bobby plays the bishop to g4, and uh, here Byron plays bishop to g5, and with this move, Byron is actually breaking the most fundamental rule in chess, uh, which is uh, moving the same piece twice in the opening. And uh, he does it with, with an idea of kind of harassing the, this e7 pawn, uh, but uh, Bobby punishes this move uh, like a 13-year-old boss that he was. And he plays a knight to a4. And this is a, well, this is a, quite a move. Uh, if you look at it, uh, white, it, it does seem like white, white can simply capture this pawn with uh, this knight with knight captures on a4. Uh, but let's see what happens if he does. If knight captures on a4, then knight captures an e4, and uh, this is a double attack on the queen and the bishop. And with, if white would play this perfectly, it would still be better for, for black. For example, if queen captures on e7, uh, bishop would capture on f3. And after queen captures on d8, and rook captures on d8, bishop would capture on d8, and now bishop captures on d1, uh, with an attack on this knight on, on a4. So knight to c3, and now simply uh, rook captures on d8, knight captures on d1, and now this rook to e8 move is, is very good for black. So uh, white has to defend uh, against threats like knight to g3, and after something like bishop to e2, simply bishop captures on d4, and this is, uh, this wins a pawn for Fisher, and this is uh, a better for black. Uh, this is probably winning for black. So after this knight to a4 move, Donald Byron doesn't capture the knight. Uh, he plays he plays queen to a3, and uh, now Fisher plays knight captures on c3. And of course, the queen can't capture the knight because knight captures on e4 would again be a double attack on the queen and this bishop on g5. So he plays b captures on c3, and now Fisher plays knight captures on e4, attacking that bishop on g5. Uh, but it, White can still capture this pawn on e7, which uh, which Barn does. He plays bishop captures on e7, and it seems like he's winning the exchange here. After the queen moves, he's going to capture the rook on f8. Uh, so Fisher plays queen to b6. So. Uh, let's see what happens if uh, Byron were to take this rook on f8. If, if bishop captures on f8, then Fischer would play bishop captures on f8 again, now with a tempo on the queen on a3. And after, after if white would play the best moves here, like queen to b3, then simply this rook to e8 move is, again, extremely good for black. Uh, so after queen captures on b6, a captures on b6, simply bishop to e2, because he, uh, white has to defend against this threat. Uh, knight captures on c3, and uh, this is, again, a lot better for black. It's a, he's a pawn up, and uh, white king is still in the center, and it's going to be very hard to play this. So, let's see. Uh, after queen to b6, uh, Byron didn't capture this rook on f8. Uh, he played bishop to c4, developing and preparing to castle. Uh, so, Fisher plays knight captures on c3, and, uh, well, 
it's it seems like he's offering a knight here, but he's really not. Uh, if queen captures this knight and simply rook f to e8, and he's winning with winning uh, material back, and he will be a pawn up. So after knight captures on c3, uh, Barn got a very very nice idea. He plays uh, bishop to c5, now attacking Fisher's queen. Uh, so Fisher plays uh, an intermezzo. He plays rook to e8 check. King goes to f1. And now, as they say, if, if this game is indeed called the game of the century, then Fischer's next move is called the move of the century. And uh, Fischer played bishop to e6. And now black has, uh, I mean, white has a lot of options here. I mean, one of the options is pretty obvious, bishop captures queen on b6. But uh, there are other options, for example. Uh, a white can capture this bishop on e6, and then the queen is still attacked, of course. So let's see what happens if this is played. Uh, if bishop captures on e6, then actu Fischer actually has a forced checkmate in 6 moves. Uh, after queen, queen to b5 check, king to g1, uh, knight to e2 check, uh, king has to go back to f1, knight to g3 with a double check from the knight and the queen, so king goes back to g1, and now the very nice uh, Philidor is made uh, queen to f1, forcing white to capture the queen, rook captures on f1, and now simply knight to e2 is a very nice uh, smothered mate. So uh, obviously, black can uh, obviously white cannot play uh, bishop captures on e6. Uh, but let's see this uh, queen captures on c3 idea. If if queen were to capture on c3, then simply queen captures on c5. And now this bishop is pinned, and also it's attacked twice. And uh, if white captures uh, the queen on c5, then simply bishop will capture this queen on c3. And again, black is better here. So after bishop to e6, uh, it's, it doesn't really seem like uh, white has any other moves but to capture the queen. So that's exactly what Donald Byrne does. He plays bishop captures queen on b6. Uh, but this allows Fisher to create uh, one, of the, one of the greatest attacks ever seen. Uh, he plays bishop captures on c4 with check, and uh, king has to go to g1. And now knight to e2 check. And now uh, Fisher forces uh, the white king into a windmill. Uh, we have king to f1, now knight captures on d4 first with check, and uh, Fischer could have played a knight to, to c3 check and then pick up a rook, but uh, he didn't uh, pick up this pawn just to grab a pawn. There, there's, a, there's a higher purpose to this move, which we'll see later. Uh, we have king back to g1, now knight to e2 check, back again, king to f1, and now knight to c3 check, and uh, king has to go back to g1. And now Fischer doesn't capture this rook, but he plays uh, a captures on b6. Uh, now attacking the queen, and now you see the queen cannot capture this knight, uh, because that's why Fischer grabbed this pawn, so the bishop will be defending the knight on c3. So very nice moves by Bobby. Uh, we have queen to b4, and uh, now again not capturing the rook on d1, but first improving the position. Rook to a4, now protecting the bishop. So queen captures on b6, and only now capturing the rook on d1. So rook captures, on, uh, knight captures on d1. Uh, we have h3, uh, Bayern wants to develop in some way. Uh, we have rook captures on a2, king to h2, and now knight captures on f1, on, a, on f2. And you can see, uh, well, uh, Bobby doesn't have a queen, but the material is uh, highly in, in black's favor. Uh, we have rook to e1, uh, Bobby captures, rook captures on e1, knight, uh, first queen to d8 check. Uh, bishop to f8, blocking, and now knight captures on e1. And if you look at this position, well, uh, white pretty much only has a knight and a queen against a rook, uh, a bishop pair, and a knight. So this will be, this is impossible to play for white, but uh, Donald Byron decides to try and play this. Uh, we have bishop to d5, uh, knight to f3. Now, white's only chance would be if Bobby would I don't know, fall asleep for three moves and allow white to play knight here, knight here, and then capture on f8, maybe. Uh, but still, he continues to play this. So we have knight to e4, uh, queen to b8, trying to grab that b7 pawn. We have b5, h4, trying to break open with h5, but Fischer plays uh, h5 himself. And now white really doesn't have any moves, but he tries. He tries uh, knight to e5, now going for this knight to d7 idea. Uh, but Bobby, Bobby finishes the game extremely nice. Uh, he plays uh, king to g7, and then now uh, if uh, knight to knight to d7, then simply bishop to d6 with check uh, picks up the queen. So Baron tries to play king to g1, and we have bishop to c5 check, and now the king is going into the mating net. King to f1, b uh, knight to g3 with check, king to e1, 
uh, bishop to b4 with check, king to d1, bishop to b3 with check, king to c1, we have knight to e2 check, king b1, knight to c3 check, king has to go to c1, and now a very nice finishing move, rook to c2 checkmate. And yeah, uh, a beautiful game, definitely deserving, deserving of the name, the game of the century. And uh, this was, uh, it, like I said, it was only after this game that everybody in the world heard who Fisher was. And uh, I think this was Bobby's last uh, tournament that he wasn't contending for the first place. Uh, one year later, he, he himself was the United States uh, champion and uh, he won the title. I believe it was uh, seven or eight times in a row uh, before he stopped playing it uh, altogether. And uh, yeah, uh, a beautiful game. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. And... Uh, and uh, as usual you can check two of my previous videos here and uh, yeah thank you all for watching and i will see you soon